Lord, it is good for us to be here. In my time of prayer, preparing for this homily, this one line landed on my heart as I read the gospel in a way that I know to trust. I know that sense of how God is somehow mysteriously speaking to me through this. Lord, it is good for us to be here. When Jesus spoke these words to Peter, sorry, when, G when Peter spoke those words, it was Peter who said that, Lord, it is good for us to be here. It was a very, very difficult time for Jesus. Things were getting darker. The cross was getting closer. A few verses earlier, this is from Matthew 17, just a few verses earlier, Jesus for the first time predicted his own death. And shortly after this reading, he predicts his death for a second time. So just picture this. this the, 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 the darkness of all that is conspiring that leads Jesus to the cross happens, is building just before. And then Peter, James, and John is, are brought to the mountaintop by Jesus where they have this experience of Jesus in all of his glory. And then they go back down the mountain where this ominous darkness continues to close in. So I have a question for you. Are you going through a difficult time? Does it feel like darkness is closing in? And what do you do when you feel such a way? May I suggest that the spirituality of our Lenten journey must, it absolutely must confront life as it is for us in this moment. An honest Lenten journey must confront the challenges of life. It must confront the baggage we carry, the attachments we have, the cycles of sin that bog us down, the worry we have for a loved one, perhaps the worry we have for our own health, the empty promises of the world, the endless desires, but yet the deep longing of our soul. The transfiguration is a definitive statement in the midst of the darkness of the world, in the, midst of our, in the midst of our worries, that God is not some abstract, distant, impersonal force, but God is a person. A person who has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit so we can always be assured of his presence. A person you can know a person you can love, and a person by whom you can be assured of your belovedness, a person who perfectly loves you. And what does this light of God, which shone through Jesus so beautifully, what does this, what does this light do? It's very interesting to me. The disciples were so overwhelmed by the glory of God that they were overcome by fear. And then Jesus, in his glory, in all of the light of God, this is what it says, came and touched them, saying, get up and do not be afraid. When the glory of God is fully revealed, God speaks to us, don't be afraid, I am here with you. St. John Paul II said, for all of its orientation to eternal life, to heavenly things, the church has refused to become a religion indifferent to the needs of the world. Jesus, God, in God's glory, is not indifferent to the needs of the world. God is not indifferent to your needs. So I ask you, are you going through a difficult time? Does it feel like darkness is closing in in your life? I would say that because Jesus is not indifferent to your needs, of course, neither should the church, for we are the body of Christ. Lord, it is good for us to be here. It is good for us to be here because we need to carve out times in our week 
to let the light of Christ into our lives. Last week I quoted St. Augustine, our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. It is good for us to be here because we are made to be in communion with God and communion with one another. We are made for communal worship because we can't do it on our own. We're not designed to do it on our own. We need one another. We need the church. We need those of us who are gathered around here who make this commitment when we pass the sign of the peace that says, I'm with you. If you're hungry, I will give you food. If you're thirsty, I will give you drink. This is the commitment that we make to one another as Christians when we pass the peace at the Mass. We are made to be in union with God and with one another. In a few minutes, when we turn to the altar, I'm going to say in what is referred to as the Eucharistic, as the preface to the Eucharist, I'm going to say, lift up your hearts. And you respond, of course, we lift them up to the Lord. In the liturgy, this is the moment of the, the, where the church wants to, to us to be spiritually formed in mind and heart to make this ascent to ponder heavenly things, to contemplate heavenly things and to participate in them through the Blessed Sacrament. And isn't it interesting that when we get up on the hill, when we are on that mountaintop, when Peter, James, and John were on the mountaintop and Peter says, I want to build a tent, a tabernacle, let's build a shelter. Jesus denies our request to build a tent and to stay there, but he comes alongside us, says, do not fear, and he walks with us back down in the valley, back down into the darkness, to show us the way home and to comfort us in our fears. We must, we are called, we are led by Christ. We must go back down into the valley. But transformed by our experience of the light to bring the light of Christ to the world, this is our purpose. This is our mission. This is why we exist. Heavenly things happen right here in our worship space, and we are called to bring heavenly things into the world in all of its needs and all of its darkness. We must go down in the valley. Oh Lord, it is good, it is good for us to be here. This week, through the lens of the spiritual disciplines of Lent, which are of course fasting, uh, prayer, and almsgiving, I first off, I want to continue to encourage you. I don't know how your Lent is going, but I want to encourage you to whatever commitments you made at the beginning of Lent, if they're a little wobbly already, that's okay. Get back to, uh, get back to the basics, and I, I, uh, I pray that uh, you will rediscover the beauty of this Lenten journey you're on. Prayer. I don't know about you, but a few weeks ago, I asked you at 5 p.m., to just briefly pause and pray for our parish. I, um, I've been doing this, and I can't tell you how beautiful it is for me as an expression in prayer to be in communion with you and to pray for our parish. Uh, the reason why five o'clock was chosen is because the Beatitudes that we read that particular week are from Matthew 5. And, you know, if we get the Beatitudes right, we got it right. So how about at five o'clock, just a brief moment of prayer, just pray for our parish at 5 p.m. I set my, I'll never remember if, I, if the alarm doesn't go off. So I set my alarm for five o'clock and have a brief time of prayer. The second, or the, the, the third, almsgiving, we're called to give our time, talent, and treasure to the church. So I have a specific need that I want to bring to your attention now. It's not, it's not financial, but it is really important. We, um, as you know, we have one shelter out back. We did have two. Uh, the second one is being refurbished. It'll, it'll be back shortly. And we're also getting a third shelter. So our shelter support team needs a little help. We need some people who are interested in working one-on-one -on -one 
with our shelter residents. If this lands on your heart in a way that you're interested in it, or perhaps you're just interested in finding more details, um, is Mike Coughlin here this morning? No? No? Okay. Um, the point of contact is Mike Coughlin. You can just uh, get in touch with the office and uh, we'll, um, we'll get you appointed to Mike, who's the coordinator for that ministry. So think about that. So prayer at 5 p.m. and uh, pray about perhaps the good Lord is calling you to support our shelter team. Oh Lord, it is good for us to be here. You have gathered us to be a community of faith, hope, and love. Help us to bear witness to the light of your glory in our everyday lives. Amen.